Antarctica is one of the few places left on our planet where vast deposits of untapped mineral wealth lies in abundance. It was, after all, merged with the southern parts of Australia for over a billion years. And as a result of this, the very same tectonic events that led to the geological construction and mineral enrichment of areas such as Victoria and New South Wales also impacted Antarctica and did the very same there. It was more closely tied to Victoria than to New South Wales though, so the same tectonic events that Victoria experienced which led to it having some of the richest gold fields on our planet also affected Antarctica, and this video is going to discuss why this frozen wasteland is hiding some of the largest reserves of not only gold, but of numerous differing valuable minerals, and how this could set the scene in the future for some of the largest conflicts between countries to occur, as they vie for dominance over the exceptional riches that lie here. As ice caps all around the world slowly melt, Antarctica is no exception, and as a result it's changing rapidly. The Environmental Protocol bans all mineral resource activities in Antarctica, other than for scientific research in present day. This might be all well and good for now, whilst minerals are easily accessible in other countries, but in a hundred years, when easy to find mineral deposits become exhausted and increasingly harder to find, I suspect attention will slowly turn towards two places, Antarctica and Greenland. I'll save my theories on Greenland for another video, but Antarctica is an incredibly ancient continent. It's gone through numerous cycles of tectonic collision and rifting. Mountain ranges have been thrust up, then fully eroded time and time again throughout the ages. When mountains get built, something truly special occurs alongside it. Gold. Well, not just gold, other valuable minerals too, but gold is arguably amongst the most highly sought after. The region of Antarctica that interests me the most though is the section that was connected with Victoria. Most people probably don't realise that Antarctica and the southern parts of Australia have been connected for over a billion years before they finally separated as a result of immense tectonic rifting that began 85 million years ago, and the two continents were fully separated by around 30 million years ago. In present day, you can clearly see the faults in southern Victoria that were created as a result of this rifting here. Both Victoria and parts of Antarctica were an ancient sea floor 550 million years ago. Tectonic collisions occurred here numerous times as the ancient Paleo-Pacific Ocean subducted beneath this area time and time again, effectively thrusting up the ancient sea floor and crumpling and buckling it as massive mountain building events took place. These events stretched from the top of modern day Queensland and went all the way down south past Victoria into Antarctica raising the land from north to south above the ocean piece by piece, and depositing immense mineral wealth along with it. This vast mineral deposition would occur time and time again as numerous tectonic collisions occurred over the next 200 million years, and multiple mountain building events would take place. And along with these events were the filling of the many faults that were created in the bedrock during the immense buckling and uplift that was experienced time and time again here, with highly pressurised gold rich fluids shooting up through these fractures and solidifying within the faults and cracks within the rocks, appearing today as quartz veins. So the same rocks that gold was literally sweat out of during metamorphism existed here in Antarctica too, as the two places underwent the same tectonic events, and therefore the gold fields in Victoria and those in Antarctica are more related than most people think. The source rock that fueled the massive gold enrichment of Victoria is thought to be Cambrian underwater basaltic volcanics. It's thought that when these rocks were subducted, the gold that was sweat out of this volcanic material directly led to the vast gold enrichment of places such as Ballarat and the entire Golden Triangle in general. But this is not including the gold fields of the Far East, which have a different origin. So essentially what this means is that in Antarctica right now is an area that mimics Victoria, which is mind boggling to think about. In Victoria, massive, and I really do mean massive gold nuggets were found. Some of the largest in the world occurred here. I'm talking real freak size stuff. There's a very, very good chance Antarctica has this too. Both of these continents were relatively stable for hundreds of millions of years after the gold events took place until the rifting here occurred. Which means the alluvial wealth held in the frozen over creeks and rivers in Antarctica would be truly unbelievable and unimaginable. It would be just like Victoria was in the 1850s. Gold everywhere. 
I can't lie, my dream that I'll never get to experience is to just dig a few holes in an exposed creek in Antarctica and do a few test pans. But I guess that experience will probably be reserved for whatever country wins the war over the resources that will inevitably occur here at some point in time in the next couple of hundred years. Assuming of course that we make it that far. So this is the truly astonishing story of Antarctica's link with Australia in more ways than one. From a billion year plus relationship between the two, to the vast mineral wealth that is contained within both continents. Australia and Antarctica are old partners that, for whatever reason, just drifted apart in time. I'm sure we've all experienced something like this in our lives, and we can probably relate to that. Maybe they'll get back together one day, and it'll be like a happy reunion. Or maybe the continents will find new, geological partners to play collision and mountain building with. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or fascinating, then you're probably a little into earth science or science in general. I release new videos once a week, so consider subscribing and if you'd like to help the channel out, the best way that you can contribute and make a huge difference is by sharing our videos around first and foremost, followed by liking the video to let YouTube know we're doing something right. Thanks again for supporting the channel, it really does mean the world to me, and like always, I'll see you all real soon.